raising money for your film. That's obviously the topic on a lot of people's minds when they talk to a producer. I'm Craig Nzana, I am an indie film and video producer, and this is one of the things that obviously people ask me a ton about. They say, you know, how do you raise money for your movie? Or will you do it for me? <laughs> uh, and the answer might be yes, if the project is interesting to me, the script is done, and you seem like you'd be cool to work with. Otherwise, even if I'm not going to produce your movie for you or you just wanna do it yourself, here are three ways, three kind of categories to break down how to raise money for your film. The first one, number one, might sound scary when I say it, but just bear with me because I think it's still one of the best ways to raise money for your project, or obviously a combination of all three is, is a good way too. Number one is investors. You don't have to get super complicated with this like we did for Blood and the Leaves. With Blood and the Leaves, we basically did a royalty sharing, personal loan type contract with investors, uh, something similar to communal farming. <laughs> Uh, but really we overcomplicated it and the best way to do it because we only had about six investors would have been to just split membership of the LLC and have them as silent partners. That sounds more complicated than it is, but basically it's just people buying into being members of your LLC. Basically their contribution to the business is the money that they're putting in. You do have to be a little careful about this and obviously it depends on the scale of which you're raising money for with SEC guidelines. There's tons of stuff on the SEC website if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that. Now, one of the really nice things about investors is especially in a smaller area or if you're just getting started is the auxiliary value that an investor can bring to the table. They can bring an air of legitimacy to your project because if they have a name in the community, that helps a lot. Sometimes they have resources that you have access to or they can act as mentors in a lot of ways. Even if they're not in your industry and they're acting as a business mentor, that is super valuable. So the things you're gonna have to consider when trying to go after investors is obviously having a really strong business plan to start out with. What you're looking at is not necessarily to promise definitely you're gonna make their money back. Don't do that because you can't promise that. Film investing is kind of like startup investing where an investor that really knows what they're doing and knows what they're getting into are going to put money into the project knowing that one out of 10 times they're not gonna make their money back, but the one out of 10 times that they will it will be a lot of money. It'll be a huge return on that investment. A great place to look for investors are people in your community that are supporters of the arts in general. These people are going to be a little bit more willing to invest in a project that may or may not make them money back. It might just be nice for them to put money into a project that they wanna see get made, and it's just an additional perk for them if they do make money, make a profit off of it. Now, to find people and to kind of get this conversation rolling and kind of learn how to make it a win-win situation for you and the investor, it comes down to, I don't mean to talk about this too coldly, but it comes down to social capital. You know, having social capital built up in the area or community or business community that you're trying to go after so that they know who you are, you're not just some random stranger coming in saying, hey, give me money, goes a long way. We talk about this in detail on the Movies in the Black podcast with Ryan Haggerty. Part one of that interview is up right now. You can check that out. I'll link it down in the description. We talk about how we raised money for Blood and the Leaves and kind of the, he was the main one that did it because he had kind of the social capital in the area because he had put effort into the community through different methods and that allowed him to kind of get that conversation started. Now, obviously the next step after you get the conversation started is you have to have a pitch. Basically, you wanna boil down that business plan to the very simple things. I, I really don't suggest using comps because it's really hard to find comps, especially at a lower budget range that actually are real. Uh, you can't use like Paranormal Activity or Blair Witch Project to convince someone that like, oh, if you invest this money, it's gonna, it's just not honest because those are total outliers and you know it. And if you don't know it, come on, they're total outliers. Now it is totally realistic to make money back on a film, especially if you're going to follow a, a structured distribution plan. I have other videos and resources on my website about distribution. If you're wondering about that, comment down in the description, we can have a conversation because that's a really important part of it. That's where the money starts to come back in. If they see that you have that planned out, and especially if they see that you have contingency upon contingency upon contingency, then it makes it a much more intelligent investment for them to make because 
they know at least you're going to do everything you possibly can to try to make the money back in addition to trying to make a really good movie. And then obviously the hard part is seen through. You gotta actually go make the movie and you have to use the money that you have and just make it happen. Now, another way to supplement this type of income where you can go ahead and try this if you want to be your primary source of fundraising is crowdsourcing or crowdfunding, whatever you wanna call it. I don't love this. I've done it in the past. I've done it for every film that I've worked on actually in some way or another, usually just to supplement the full budget. Um, and it kind of can work as a marketing tool just to kind of give people a buy-in before the film actually comes out. Now, the most common one that you hear people talk about is Kickstarter, but I want to warn you in 2015, Kickstarter's success rate was 43%. Now that's 2015. If we follow the trajectory of the data, it's probably more like 30% now. That is not very good. And you're gonna put a lot of resources into trying to raise this money on Kickstarter. And if you don't meet your budget, then you're just screwed. Interestingly, I used to think that documentaries were the best way to go about raising money through Kickstarter or Indiegogo. But what I found out when I was looking into the data for this video is that more documentaries are put up on these platforms than any other type of film. So what seems like there's a higher success rate is actually not accurate. The success rate of documentaries compared to other types of film is about even. That shouldn't discourage you if you have a short film that's not a documentary or you do have a documentary, just know that the odds of success are, are pretty much even on both ends. What's really crazy, so so like I said, 33% is the success rate on indie or on Kickstarter. The estimate success rate for Indiegogo is 9.8%. That is so low. So one in 10 projects are getting funded on Indiegogo. That's kind of the go-to, that's always been my go-to until a couple years ago. Honestly, after my last project, I realized that, okay, this is not working anymore. It used to be a much better platform. And I think for technology and products, it is a great platform, but film is just not something that they've really thrown a lot of support behind. And the community just isn't there of people that are interested in donating and contributing to those types of projects. Now, the one crowdfunding platform that I would really recommend checking out is called Seed and Spark. The success rate on Seed and Spark is 75% plus. A caveat to that is that it, there's way less projects on Seed and Spark and the type of people that are, are using Seed and Spark are generally more experienced filmmakers. So that probably lifts that number quite a bit because the projects on there are just kind of pre-qualified because the only people that know about Seed and Spark are people that are already filmmakers for the most part. That doesn't change the fact that 75% is a huge number and Seed and Spark has tons of great resources on their site. Please go check them out if you're interested in crowdfunding for a film. The interesting that they, thing that they do is they kind of have built a model that supports actually attracting film lovers to the platform because they have a, a, a streaming platform that has all kinds of really cool short films and feature films and web series there that's a paid platform to stream and watch these, these videos, movies. And one of the ways to pay for it is to contribute to films that are trying to raise money. So that is a really cool, platform method of, of building a community. And they've just done such a great job of building a community up around this platform. And it's specifically focused on raising money for films. They also have a really great course about crowdfunding that's free. So if you're interested in taking this route, supplementing your other ways of raising money with crowdfunding, that is like 100% the way to go. Number three, and this is really big for documentaries, is fiscal sponsorship. Now, in another video, I talked about your business entity structure. So if you're formed as an LLC, you're obviously not a nonprofit. People can't just donate to your project and write it off on their taxes. You're also not really eligible for a lot of grants. And that can be a problem, especially for documentaries. Now, the answer is not necessarily to go make your film a nonprofit. There's a ton of legality and administrative costs that come along with being a nonprofit. The best way to do it is to find a nonprofit that already exists and have them fiscally sponsor your project. Now, what that means is basically they apply for grants and they accept donations on your behalf and then their funding, they then write the checks to you. Usually they take an administrative fee out, which is totally fair for them to do. I wouldn't say more than 10 to 15%. I mean, that's kind of pushing it up there. It's gonna depend on if they do this very often, if they have a system for this already figured out. One of the best places to look would be your local film office or whatever the nonprofit organization that works with film, whether it's a film society, something like that. If you're in a city that's definitely going to exist, 
A lot of rural areas have a regional group that exists for those purposes. But if you don't, another thing you can check out is something called Fractured Atlas. This is a national, I think actually global nonprofit that does fiscal sponsorship. So if you look up Fractured Atlas fiscal sponsor, you can find the information on that. And it's a really great way to be able to, A, I mean, if you're an LLC, you could have investors in your project. And also then, especially if it's a social impact type film, accept grant money and uh, donations that the people that donate can write off. That's a huge benefit if your film is something that's around some kind of cause. So thank you for watching this video. I'm going to link a few things down in the description that you should check out. One is the distribution flow chart. Like I said, anytime you're raising money, it's very useful to have a plan of how you're gonna make that money back or at least try to. And I have something called the distribution flow chart. It kind of builds things out with contingency upon contingency to say, we're gonna to try to maximize our money here. If we don't make as much money as we want to here or any money here, then we're gonna move down to here and then to here and then to here. It's a really useful way to impress investors and honestly make a good plan to try to make the money back for your film. If you're interested in going deeper on that, I'm working on a distribution course that basically uses that structure and goes way deep on everything that I've learned over the past decade researching and trying to figure out this whole distribution thing. And I'll use case studies from some films that I have uh, acquaintances that have given me access to their data and obviously the films that I've made that I have the data from as well and industry data that I can pull from different sources. That course is not currently out yet, but if you follow the link down in the description for the distribution course, you can find a sign up so that you can get an email whenever the course comes out. So thank you for watching this video. Again, comment down in the description if you have any questions. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Goodbye.